So now we are proceeding with, uh, with a presentation on the Hellenic maritime cluster. After having gone through a brief history, a journey in time Please. shipping uh, with uh, Mr. George Fustanos, now we have with us Mr. George Pateras, who is the president of the Hellenic uh, Chamber of Shipping and the Hellenic Maritime Cluster. And Mr. Pateras is going to give us a footprint of the Hellenic Maritime Cluster, which is not only ship owning, but all the other activities around, uh, uh, around shipping. So, uh, Mr. Pateras, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, by the way, he would welcome questions from the audience. Uh, if you submit them, uh, you all know that uh, you can submit your questions through the Q&A button at the end of your screen. Mr. Pateras, thank you for being with us and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to the Capital Link Forum. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank um, Nikos Bornozis for the invitation and the chance to fly the flag of the Hellenic Maritime Cluster to such a big audience. As you're all aware, Greece has a leading position with respect to fleet size for several years. The latest figures show that Greece controlled 20% of the world's capacity and almost 25% of the world's tanker fleet. Something that is of great interest to the current audience. That means that one in four tankers in any port, statistically, will be Greek-owned. Today, about 90% of world trade is transported by sea. Our shipping community, ladies and gentlemen, is therefore a force to be reckoned with. Ton mile for ton mile, we are the safest and the most ecologically friendly form of transport currently available worldwide. Less than 3%, 0.3% of emissions, or oh, sorry, let me start again, less than 3% of emissions from ships, according to the findings of the EUMR. We have the best safety record of any other form of tran transport for which we deserve acknowledgements. Since this was achieved by self-regulation and the continuous upgrade of our standards, with a pragmatic awareness for the environment, for environmental protection of our planet. The members of the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping consists basically of everything that floats and flies the Greek flag, together with foreign flag, ocean going vessels managed from Greece. I'm proud to be the chairman of the Chamber of Shipping with over 26,000 active members. My board consists of senior representatives of all categories of shipping, from the VLCC and the largest cask carriers to the smallest fishing boats and private yachts. They're all representative, representative on my board, all from the ocean going fleet, the ferry boat fleet, the short sea shipping fleet, tugboats, commercial yachts, private yachts and motor ships. The Hellenic Chamber of Shipping is the official institutional advisor to our government, to the Ministry of Merchant Marine and Insular Policy, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Economy, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now that I've made a brief introduction to the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping and what we do, I would like to inform you about the Hellenic Maritime Cluster, which again, I have the honor to chair. The Hellenic Maritime Cluster has over 105 current members made up of the following categories. You will see that we have 26,000 Greek flag crafts and of all sizes and all types. We have about 4,000 foreign flag ocean going vessels controlled by Greeks, managed out of Greece. 900 ship management companies, 475 legal entities, 
620 manufacturers and dealers of maritime equipment, an essential part of our cluster. 7,300 yachts, private or charter and other tourist activities. 230 entities involved in maritime tradition and water sports. Over a thousand services to shipping, i.e. legal insurance companies, brokers, etc. 30,000 certificated deck and engine officers. This number is difficult to calculate because many seafarers sail on foreign ships and unless they come and pay their NAT contributions, it's, we don't have a registry of them for that particular sailing. I believe there are actually more. And we have over 35,000 highly qualified personnel ashore, which basically run our shipping companies. Over and above the 105,000 members of our current cluster, we have at least a further 150,000 men and women working in the maritime related industries, according to a study by the Bank of Greece. Our cluster grows in size approximately 5% annually, of which 6.7% is the annual growth of our ocean going fleet, that alone, over the, and that is an average over the past five years. The benefits of our cluster have been available to us and have been used for generations. I recall my grandfather, after the launching of Family Vessel in Belgium, wondering whether the right paint combination had been applied to this new building. The shipyard not actually having given him the, the option. So at the formal dinner after the launching, he brought it up in conversation amongst his peers who consisted mainly of other Greek ship owners. The information resulting from this ensuring discussion was phenomenal. The shared knowledge was exactly what he needed to hear. Details of quality, quantity, brand names, specifications followed among, flowed from all the guests. And of course, not forgetting we are Greeks, payment terms and credit terms were also discussed. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the purpose of our cluster. Exchange of information, synergies, and networking. We know that the cluster has informally always been around. We know that the cluster works, and we know that the cluster is necessary, not only for the growth of our industry, but for maintaining the high standard and the innovation, which is all about Greek shipping. I know very well when I have a problem, whether it's with a ship or with a charter or any maritime related incident, I can call a huge number of people and get advice on how to solve my problem. As undoubtedly someone else will have encountered the same or similar problems at some time during their career in this most interesting of industries. But this is at all levels of management. This is at all levels of ship operation. And this is at all levels on the ships. How often have our ships, Greek owned ships in port had a problem and gone to another Greek owned ship and got assistance. That is all networking. That is all part of our maritime cluster. But today, our cluster has shown to have others, another substantial benefit for us and our industry. It is for, it's for all intents and purposes, our lobby. Shipping in Greece directly contributes to about 7% to the Greek national GDP. So it has a voice, not only in Greece, but in Europe. Greece controls 54% of the European Union fleet. So we have, for example, we all have concerns about availability of sufficient, safe, compliant, low sulfur, yes, sir, and I beg your pardon. Um, we all have these concerns about availability of safe, compliant, low sulfur fuel. We can and should voice our concerns through our very powerful, powerful cluster. Currently, 
we have the issues of crew changes. Our cluster has the power and the lobby as we all go together in support of the Union of Greek Shipbuilders, the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping. Our cluster can work together to assist and get the voice out of our current problems. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of 2017, the Union of Greek Ship Owners, the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping, and the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Piraeus decided to formalize the maritime cluster. And therefore, we created Maritime Elas, Navigate the Greek Cluster. All shipping related industries within Greece, from the tugboat owner in Thessalonica to the fishermen on the island of Inusis, in all, all of Greece, to the largest ship owner in Greece, are all automatically members of our maritime cluster. So the request from our community was to create an internet version to move the cluster into a more menial, mean, uh, amenable networking system. Take it out from the books and, on, and put it onto the web. A task much harder than I had originally anticipated. You'll find that your 14 year old child can surf the internet, write a text message and talk to you all at the same time. Whereas our generation, or should I say my generation, is still not yet that tech savvy, but we're getting there. In closing, I'd like to say that we can all benefit from the synergies and the cooperation with the Hellenic Maritime Cluster, as we offer generations of know-how in all the fields, from finance to marketing to technical and seamanship. Let's look forward to all working together Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. George, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation, giving us an idea of the size uh, and of the footprint of the Greek maritime cluster. Um, one of the points that you mentioned uh, in your presentation was about lobbying. Can you expand a little bit on that? Well, what we try to do is as a cluster, because our main masters or owners are the Union of Greek Ship Owners, the um, Commercial Chamber in, in, in the Industrial Chamber of Piraeus and the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping, we have our finger in all the pies. So when we get together, we can speak for a huge group of people and we can pass the messages and understand what each one of, one of us needs. And then we can go together or collectively, as we have done on several issues here in Greece. We have collectively gone after meetings and known what each one of our members want. And we can go to the European Union, as we've done with this ferry boat project, which we're working on together, which is to renew our ferry boat fleet. And we've gone to the European Union and we've said, you know, this is what we need but we needed the cluster to know what we actually had, to know that 15% of the population lives on the islands, to know that 35 million tickets are issued every year, 10 million tons of cargo, 2.8 million cars are transported. Individually, we didn't know this, but by tapping into the knowledge of the cluster, we were able to gather this information and then tapping again to the knowledge of the cluster, we were able to design a generic replacement for our Greek fleet because all the universities are members of our cluster. And you, because you're part of the cluster, we can share the information. That information then becomes, because power is information today, we gather all this information together and then we can go as one voice towards the parliament, towards our ministries and towards the European Union to find ways to, for example, renew our fleet of uh, our ferry boat fleet. We do the same on all issues. As a cluster, we've gone forward about the non-compliant fuel. We were able to collect from all our members because from the cluster, it's not just the ship owners, 
that will provide us information about the quality of available sulfur fuel oil. We can go to members who are suppliers, bunker suppliers. We have members who are the oil refineries, and they can share amongst us through an official channel all the information that we need. Thank you. Uh, another question I'd like to ask you, actually, we have a number of questions coming through. You, you're very popular. Um, Thank you very much. And of course, the topic is very interesting. So one, one of the questions that I'd like to ask you is, Greece has admittedly uh, the largest percentage of the global fleet. Do you think that the uh, impact we have on decision-making bodies and, and the, on the industry globally is proportionate to the ownership size we command? Unfortunately not. And I only say that in the sense that unilateral decisions are always being made by individual countries or individual group of countries like the European Union. The European Union now voted in ETS. It's a unilateral decision, which I think is not going to be, is not the right solution. I mean, I pay to pollute. I find this to be a very bad decision. So the richer can pollute more than the poorer. Again, I think this is, we've got off onto the wrong, we've got the wrong end of the stick on this particular issue. But we have a big voice, but unfortunately, I believe we have not been able, and I don't think we really need to flex our muscles. We have a, a big voice. We have a huge cluster, one of the largest clusters in the world. We have the advantage in our cluster of having a huge fleet, which makes our cluster very powerful. If you go to other nations which have created clusters, they have created a cluster because they don't have a fleet. And because they don't have a fleet, they've created a cluster around a port which have facilities or have uh, uh, the ability to have massive volumes of cargo, throughput cargo, or transshipment cargo. We designed our cluster around the fact that we had an enormous fleet and therefore an enormous ancillary personnel or industry around to support the fleet. So our cluster is very healthy and it's very diverse as opposed to being just a cluster around a port that has very few national flag vessels. So, but it's not just the maritime fleet. We have a huge um, yachting industry, which is massive, the yachting industry, and a huge contribution to the Greek um, uh, GDP. Don't forget, self-isolation on a yacht is probably the best holiday you can have in current pandemic times. So I, I see I have a, a written message. Yes. So have the pandemic, from Professor Thanopoulou, have yes. the pandemic uh, restrictions affected, strengthened, or neutralized the contacts between the members of the cluster? Will the cluster now become more interactive electronically? We, we all want to become, the, the, the one basic usefulness of our cluster is the connectivity, is the networking that we had. We were used to doing it by having a plethora of meetings. It's a cluster when three or four of us go to dinner. The Marine Club is a place to meet for clusters. The Yacht Club, uh, going out to dinner, meeting in a shipyard. We have the ability and we talk. We had this big problem because of the pandemic, so we don't meet, but everybody's found their way around it. We have today. We're Zooming. This meeting, we're reaching out probably a bigger audience than we would have reached had we had it in one particular country. Because by Zooming, I don't have to leave. I don't have to make the trip to come to you. I can just turn around on my desk, connect, and then get back to work when it's all over. So I think there is a usefulness. I fear that it's not going to be a permanent, I think, there is a problem, for example, from working from home. I think this is not really going to work, the working from home. Psychologically, we need to separate home from work. But also, I think environmentally, it's far more economical to warm one building where we all work than to heat our separate homes, regardless of the fact that people drive to work, because only 0.05% of the population drive to work. 99.95% of the population take uh, the trains or buses. So... Environmentally, it's going to be, let's hope the pandemic is over and we all get to meet again. Much more fun. 
Thank you very much, George. We have come now to the end of the time. Very interesting presentation. Thank you. I retain one of the key points that you made that uh, we have the, that we have designed the Greek shipping cluster around the huge ship owning uh, capacity that Greece has. That, that's a key point and uh, excellent remark for the overall uh, cluster. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much, Nico, and good luck to the, for the rest of the uh, the. Uh, conference. Of course, and we are now going to proceed with Minister Plakiotakis again. George, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.